Okay. Hey guys, welcome to this Solaris Live Coding. Um, Happy New Year, everybody. I hope um, you had a, um, you're having good holidays. And yeah, so today it will be a uh, stream in English. We will try to continue some work in progress about the new sound API from Solaris 1.7 and in particular we have two feature requests so this one being able to stop a sound effect and this one support for localized sounds um, so I've been focusing on sound effects since uh, the previous two uh, or three live streamings so I will continue this today hope you can hear me well yeah okay so last time I can show you what we, what we did You should be able to hear sounds and musics. Okay. Basically, you can now stop playing a sound, a sound effect. For example, let's create a sound. Uh, yeah, this one. So as you can see, I can start playing it, and I can stop it in the middle. But the only problem is that for now I don't support well the case of multiple sounds that uh, refer to the same file. For example, if I create a second sound object here, it's, it's actually considered to be the same as the first one. So, which means that if I start one, and if I start the other one, and if I stop one, it will stop both. Um, I also have some error messages in the console, so it's not completely working yet. Uh, maybe this happens when I... when... Where is my window? Ah, it's here. Maybe this happens when I stop a sound that is already stop it stopped. No. Okay. Ah, it happens when whenever I just interrupt the sound. Okay, probably a small detail to fix. All right. Uh, so first, first I have to fix this problem of handling duplicate sounds. So I think. I had some thought about, thoughts about that since last stream, and I think I should separate this in two classes. One that stores sound data, and one that stores the, the state of playing a sound. So, let's say that this class will be the state, and I will create another class that I can call sound data or sound buffer, I don't know. Uh, 
Okay, I'm creating two files. Sound buffer. I will add to have them to Solaris library sources. Ah, here. Okay. Cool. Sound buffer. Okay, now I should see it. Yep. Um, represents the state of playing the sound effect. This one will not ch change much, but some stuff will will move from this one to the other one. Oh, by the way, I forgot to update copyrights to <laughs> both 2020 and now 2021, apparently. So this is some buffer. Hi Zacharis. that this is a stateless class. Hi, Cryptexus. Okay, so this will clearly change public. This guy will clearly go here. This is the, actually, the actual buffer. Containing an encoded sound file, okay.
something like that. This one. To load the encoded sound from memory. I think this one should also move. Code five, this will also move. And here, this will move. So, so the actual data stored in OpenAL will be here. And here, it will only be one unique source. Device context, probably don't need that one. Space, I forgot that. What did I? Oh, okay, everything is also in namespace or ours. this I 
le même copy. Okay then, constructor. No buffer yet, not loaded yet. Okay, let's declare these constructors sound buffer and sound buffer. So these guys are no longer here, only sound ID. And obviously, here there will be some buffer. Um, <coughs> it will probably be a shared PTR. No. Hmm. Just a pointer, I think. So this will be provided by a resource provider instead of a sound object. Let's call it with another name because we already had the previous field called buffer and of course it doesn't have the same type.
I'm working on this new feature request for Solarus 1.7, being able to stop a sound, a sound effect. And one tricky thing, thing let's say, is that you can play the same sound twice, and you may want to stop only one of both instances. So that's why I have to separate the data from the state. You can have multiple sound, uh, yeah, M multiple times the same, same sound being played. Anyway, so it was already working f since last last stream, except that detail of the possibility to play the same sound multiple times. So I previously had only this class sound that stores both the, the sound data and the state of playing the sound, even if it's being played several times. And uh, yeah, I need to to better separate it. So this class will now be only the state of playing the sound, and this class will be the the sound data. So if you're playing three times the same sound, uh, you will have three different instances of this class, but only one instance of that class. This should not really change. So here we will have some buffer. Hi, Barinade. I'm just trying to see how this was implemented before. Ah, yes, we had this big table, all sounds. I might have to put that back. But we also have current sounds. So I can create it, put it in that list. Question is when it when is it destroyed?
could try to to declare this as unique PTR. Really, Mystery of Solarus was the was your first Zelda game. Wow, <laughs> awesome! So actually, the file name. Not sure how to implement that. We start with resource provider because that should be easier. So resource provider when it is asked for a sound, it will return the sound data in no state. So here we don't store some PTR, we store some buffer. And what's interesting is that here they store shared PTR of tileset. So at some point I have to pass the, the file name here.
Effector Sound. I create it here and I put it actually in two, two structures. Mm, okay, so I actually need some pointers here. PTR sound buffer. Sun ID. Okay. Which means that this class wants sound ID. Okay, so an ID. So resource provider creates that and calls load. Get sound should do kind of the same. Create it if necessary and load it. Okay. Cool. So I'm still not sure of that. Let's revert it to what it was just before. For now. Initialized get ID exists. Get volume, set volume, update, update playing. Could test it like that.
So is load a load? All of that should move to the other class. It's about loading the sound data. Decode file, do I have this function? Not yet. Okay, so all of this should also move. So I need quest files. to do find a better solution. Okay, so all of this should be unchanged. It's the code that converts the org vorbis uh, some file to actually decodes the the the, the vorbis some file to to raw data that we can send to OpenAL. And it puts it puts it in, in an open AL buffer. Okay, so once it's loaded, I guess I'm gonna I'm gonna need a get buffer function just to make it work. We still need quest files here. This will be done later. Update, update playing, start, okay. Didn't initialize this correctly. And um, by the way, it's yeah, it's a pointer. Resource provider get sound. Oh, 
Ein. Except that I cannot really call resource provider from here. Yes, 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 indeed. I think it it would be better to to pass this. To the constructor. I don't know why I <coughs> I don't know why I need a, an empty constructor here. So let's try like that maybe. Sound buffer. <coughs> Class sound buffer, cool. Don't need this. Okay, I need it for now. So I guess no more ID in this class. I should better separate all the static stuff. I mean, maybe one day put the static stuff in a separate class. Okay, so the data is never on the PTR now. I think I will still need an ID here. Okay, so start. If data if it's not loaded just load it. What's wrong here? Public function from some buffer, ah, but it's supposed to be const. Okay. Or oh, we we assume that it's already loaded.
So as expected here, we need get buffer. But this becomes wrong. We can have multiple times the same. Actually, no. We'll have two sound instances. Yeah, if if the user wants to play the same files multiple times, it will create multiple sound instances here. Get ID, please. Okay, so this becomes simpler. We only have one source now. Same here. And the last one we have to implement is this one. Okay. So let me think because this is supposed to be a static function. So if we create a sound object here, but we exit the function, we don't want to destroy it. But maybe we are fine because Because all current sounds are actually stored here. So that, that that's why I was thinking of maybe storing a shared PTR of current sounds. It's a bit weird to do it like, like this with two loops, but okay. Where? Can't find it. Okay. What? 
P T R And when do we add something to this list again? When we start it, current sounds remove. It's a bit dirty because I have to call. Uh, shared from this So maybe I want this to be private. And I want oops uh, static some PTR create like we do for surfaces. this So this is a static function, OK? So it makes more sense to do that. But why do we also need to do it in the destruct destructor then?
don't think we should do that. So start and in case of success, we do this. Okay, I also need to implement this one now. So resource provider get sound. This will give me the buffer. Some idea. from the buffer and start. Which will put it in the list, which means that it won't be destroyed too soon. Is private. Who cares? <laughs> I am in a function of class sound, so I'm allowed to create a sound object using the private constructor here. Private. Ah, but uh, maybe because it's a shared 
using my shared maybe it doesn't work how did I do for surface now I do it here it's kind of the same thing ah but okay the constructors are public interesting I don't want the constructor to be public. Okay, this is some good progress here. So now we create a sound. So the main difference is that things have changed. We, didn't, we no longer create a sound like that. We first create a sound buffer. And then we create a sound PTR. And then we start the sound. And when we start the sound, we don't load the data, we hope it's already loaded. So let's make sure it's loaded.
Okay. Hi, Thor Asgard. I'm streaming in, streaming in English tonight, but uh, I'm trying to finish this feature request about stopping a sound effect. So we'll see if it works. Well, it doesn't compile. Uh, yes, yeah, some API grade this also has changed. Yeah, I'm precisely implementing this to do here. Create a sound buffer, which will always be the same if we are asking several times the same sound. Then we create a different sound instance with sound create data. So I don't really have to explicitly load it because this guy already loads it. So I don't remember where I was before, but I actually didn't need to. Ah, yes, this is the old, the old version. You can do a bit slightly easier here. Let's do it like this. Okay, so sound API. <clears throat> Get the sound data. Create the sound sound state from this data. And just return it. And we're done. Uh, and something I wanted to do is actually to rename this. Or maybe not. Maybe not. And I will have to make sure that it also works with the quest editor. Okay. Compilation success. So let's run a game now. Oh, cool. At least I can still hear some sound effects. So I didn't break everything. I do have some errors here. Maybe I broke music. But sounds are working. Actually it's it gives an error for an, another music, not the one that is actually playing. I have a lot of errors here. So it's not really stable yet.
So let's create a sound. Okay, the fun fact is that it seems to work better from the Lua API than from the C++ code. Because for example, when I try to use my sword multiple times, it does not always work, the sound does not always work. But here it, it seems to work better. So let's try to understand this error here. Fail to fill the audio buffer with decoded. Data. I will. I, I, I want also to improve this error message. Where, where does it come from? From here. Okay. So why is it trying to to load over and over again some sounds? This guy is called by only by music. Oh, yeah. Okay, so it's really something completely different. Somehow I must have broken music's. But I only changed the code of sound. I didn't change anything related to playing music. But uh, okay, let's see. <clears throat> Fail to generate audio buffer. That's not a good start. Say that before, yes.
Do we have a source at this point? We generate one. We set some things. Let's print the source as well. So I should probably take care of the very first error that I saw, which is failed to generate audio buffer. Why would this be? F why could this fail? I don't really understand. Maybe because it's called too early in the process. Hi, Krishbu. Thanks. Happy New Year. Yeah, we could load, of course. Um, And you have some problems with IT data and also OGG data. Where is it? Same here, we need to improve the display. But we we have a lot of this error here, A001, so just try to see what it is. It's invalid name, invalid name parameter. Are you computing sound using a thread? So actually, since last time, I'm preloading all sounds in a background thread, so that the first time you ask for a sound, it will immediately be available without any loading time. So that's, that's what I do, um, let's see, here, preloader's thread. I take care of sounds and tilesets. But I don't I don't understand why we why I have this invalid name error because 
where do I even use name parameters in open AL calls? Invalid name parameter. It's very strange. Okay. <laughs> Error zero, that's interesting. You mean this error? The thing is that it's the first that I just created and its creation failed. Oh, okay, fail to generate audio buffer for sound file treasure.otg. So that's a random sound. created by the preloader thread.
so it does exist, it does work. Oops, sorry for the noise. Yeah, and now it happens on another one. So there is something random due to the thread. So maybe I should. Well, I will. I will already commit my changes because I refactored a lot of things. Wait. Include Solaris Audio Sound Buffer. Okay. So let's try to preload, but in the same thread first. Okay, still have some weird issues. It looks like every time I play a sound, I have this error that shows up after the sound, sound ends. And also, if I play twice the same song too fast, I have more errors. Cannot attach buffer, blah blah blah. Mm, that's also interesting. First, I, I don't understand why it calls OGG decoder. Uh, but wait, this is for the music. Right? Or is it for both? Now, okay, it's just no decode file. This is very strange because this error that we see a lot, we see it every time. There is a sound that ends, but it's not even generated by sounds, it's generated by playing music. Yeah, I agree with that, uh, Thor. Destination buffer uh, is invalid in case 
In case I have uh, this problem here, fail to generate an audio buffer. It won't compile. <laughs> I, I want to try without any music because there is something interfering between music and sounds. Okay, so you have some issues, but nothing related to playing music. I don't hear any sound at all. And that's kind of scary because I only commented code about music, right? So here we have a source. Multiple buffers. Yeah, makes sense. So here at least I have something consistent, right? But I did hear the first sound. That was the only one, so... It must mean that the first sound works and something is wrong when, when it ends, okay? And then it breaks the remaining sounds
fail to delete source after playing sound blah 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 error something let's see if we have an error here because this is the code that suppose is supposed to be detecting that uh, that the sound is done playing but I know I removed some code uh, no it was not here it was in the destructor so it should not change anything actually update playing did not change that much Get a status. I can also print the status of the source. I can have multiple sources for, for one sound if I'm playing the same sound multiple times. So that's possible, yes. But in the code now, I have only one, I only have one source in one instance of sound. And if the same sound is playing multiple times, I have multiple instances of sound here. So when the sound starts, what do we do? Get the buffer, which is already loaded, and we create a source. And then we we check. And something is wrong here the second time. Cannot attach buffer, something to source, something. OK, 
Okay, but just to be sure, I will I will add a, a check similar to this in sound. In my code, your, the update function seems to suppose that the first sound will only be the first sound to end. So here I, I browse, I traverse all sounds. I update them all, and if, uh, if some of them are done, I remove them from my list. So I'm not assuming any particular order here, I think. Okay, so indeed we have some previous audio error that is not cleaned. That's what I thought. So is it the update playing of the previous sound? this we also have some calls here and we don't check anything We almost copy paste the same as here. Fail to delete source, and we didn't check the status. Ah, yes, indeed. So, the, the previous code was uh, was indeed storing multiple sources in the same sound instance, and that was the problem. I was not able to distinguish the state of multiple times the same sound being played. So that's pre precisely what I'm trying to fix. Okay, so this is some progress. 
And I have an error with the very first sound. The source is zero, which means it was already deleted. So I should rather check if source is not none. So this case happens when you destroy the sound instance before stopping playing the sound. So then we need to stop playing the sound. But normally that should really not happen, I think because we store all sounds here in this list as sharp PTRs, so by design they cannot be destroyed at this point. Yeah, and what happens if you stop them? Oh, we do this <laughs> once again. You better check the possible errors then. When stopping, stopping sound. But here we we should also check that source is not none. Nothing to do in this case. It's not it's not an error to me. You can call or stop multiple times for the same sound. It, it it will have no effect no effect if the sound is already stopped. Yeah, if you are looking for to the code from the repo, um, you need to go to the branch audio API. Previous are not cleaned. Interesting. Your update playing method set the source to AL non when it stops the sound. I hope so. Yep. So what just happened? I didn't have any error this time. And boom, now I have one. But it's zero. Which means there is no error precisely. This is a bad pattern. I, I need to call it like this, I think. Uh, it returns AL enum.
Bibles. I should make this, I should make a function check uh, al and then clean state, something like that. Can you do that? Just to put this in a separate function. Oh, but I should return false in this case. Okay. Let's see. Okay, I will just commit what I have, and and then you can see. I hope it's compiling, but it, oops, I think it should. So you can see on GitLab, I just pushed in in this branch audio API.
Oh, okay, it just says started. It doesn't even say the uh, full prefix. Okay, so I'm starting a sound, but I have a previous audio error. It, it already works much better, actually. I can swing my sword a lot of times now. I'm not sure why the game is lagging so much, maybe it's because of the stream. And I still have this crash in the end. Must be doing something wrong. Okay. And what if I do nothing and I just let the title screen finish? So obviously I don't have any music because I disabled music. Ah, and already I have some audio error not cleaned. I think it should still... It might still be related to music. Because even, even if I commented out playing a music, it will still load it and do stuff, I think. Wait, did I even compile? Of course not. Here I have some real errors now. Failed to get a status. This is so strange. Ah, yeah, I think you're correct. Yes, 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 of course. Indeed. <laughs> Thank you. But fail to get a status. I think we have another instance of the state being not, not clean. Uh, here. Oh. 
Let's make sure. Um, check open AL clean state. But this is just called in a loop by that. So it's probably update playing itself that. Well, I don't know. No, I don't know. It might still be related to music. Previous audio error not cleaned in some start now. Okay, so no problem this time. Oops. <laughs> I forgot about these. Okay, when I call stop, it doesn't work. Interesting. But I did something strange. I called play multiple times. So what, what should we even do when we call play on a sound that is already playing? We should... 
I guess I should do nothing. Why oh, didn't he didn't keep the history because it crashed actually? Okay, so at least I should handle some particular cases here when you are trying to stop a sound that is already stopped or that is not started or when you are trying to play a sound that is already playing. But first I will I want to restore all this code because I, I th I'm afraid I will forget to uncomment everything that I had commented before. So audio API music.cpp So this one and also in a resource provider I want to put back my thread okay and then in sound.cpp so we get the state and here we have the status that can be sometimes 64 or 1 no status 24 I guess it's already stopped um, okay Which one is 24? <laughs> Should be this one, yes. But how is it already stopped? What do we do exactly in stop? If there is no source, we do nothing. If there is a source, we stop the source. But here we should check the status first.
Stop the set the source to none. Yep, you're right. That's, that's very likely to be our problem here. We did source stop uh, and we deleted it. But then we still use it later. So that's very bad. Yeah, very good point. I wanted to paste this but to get a state. Yeah, if we should also handle the case of a source that is not playing. So we get the state. Yeah, let's let's don't do that, but I mean the status. If status is not playing it could also be paused so if it's paused I guess we can stop it but yeah so if it's playing or paused Then we do some something. We do that. Mm -hmm. Well, that's actually our function. We should call this one from update playing from and from the destructure <coughs> I mean from the destructor I'm not sure So here we said uh, we detached the source from the buffer, we delete the source. And here obviously I made the same mistake. So at least here, okay, I will make a uh, separate function, okay. So it will be pretty much that. We stop the source, we delete it. So all of, nothing to do if source is already is already clean. That's that's for sure. And then we delete it, we stop it, we delete it. Um, Can't really give yeah let's say for sound something yeah so 
So here we stop it in this state. And here, get the source status. I think this is a bit too much checking the source status. I mean, checking errors here. It's not really an operation, we just get the status of the source, but. And if it's done playing, we, we do the same stop source. Cool. And in the destructor, this is again the same code. And then what happens if we call start twice? We get the buffer. But here I, I don't even check that. What happens if I already have a source? Oops. We said that we wanted to to restart it. So if there is already a source, we stop it and we create a new one. That should work. By the way, here we do that. Ooh. But we should do, if we delete it, we should set it to none as well. Otherwise, we cannot really recover from this error. Source play. Okay. Let's try this. So from MDD playing, you say we are calling AL source stop on an already stopped source. Yes. And that's that's what I think we, we were already doing that, but I might be wrong. Let's check. Ah, okay, no, we were not. So you're right. You, I'm adding AR source stop. So Um, yeah, we could just try and see what happens. Or read the documentation, maybe. <laughs> what happens if we call AL source stop on an already stopped source? Wait, I, I don't, I cannot even find OpenAL documentation. Ah, okay, I found it. Great, that's a PDF. But why not? Uh, 
apply to AL initial is a legal no op. Apply it to playing is we change the state to stopped and then we destroy it anyway. The source is exempt from processing, its current state is preserved. Yeah. AL source stop apply to AL post will change to stopped. Perfect. And source stop applied to AL stop source is a legal no operation. So that's good. That's exactly what we wanted. AL source play applied to AL playing will restart the source from its beginning. Interesting. The code that I was that I just changed is not necessary. I mean, here. I don't really have to stop and recreate the source. But I would need some specific code to reuse it. And don't create a new one, actually. For example, if we could do that. If there is no source, we create one. And if, if there is already one, because it's already being played, it will just use the existing one. We do nothing here. Okay. Uh, this is already also part of the if. What did I do here? I have a local variable source. That sounds overly complicated. If there is an error, I don't use it. Okay. And so I don't need that. Gonna play sound. Yeah, basically just call it AL source play. Okay, cool. Yeah, uh, Thor Asgard, you're, so you're also using OpenAL in, in your own program? Yeah, you're right, we, we both found the same documentation. Mm, cool. Cannot play sound. Cannot play sound at all. What did I break? So I'm here. Oh, wait, else. This is uh... ah this is, this was the health of the error. 
Yeah, it's completely stupid. If source is known, I create it. And if it already exists, I do something. Uh, okay, here we have an error. Let's return false. Return false. And well, if if there is no buffer, there is nothing to play. And return true here. It's it's easier to make mistakes if you have a lot of nested blocks here. So let's get rid of special cases with early returns. So actually I was not playing the sound at all. Fail to delete sound source. It's it still said can play sound. Well, anyway, does it compile? I still do not hear anything. Oh, that, that's bad. That one is bad. Really, I didn't initialize this. How did it even work at, at any point? Okay, because I, I wasn't checking the initial value of my source when calling play, when calling start. I added this very recently. So yeah, there was a possibility that the source um, by mistake was well no it was it was it was always overwritten so that should have no but no really really bad consequence okay now I hear my sounds again okay perfect Do I still have a crash when I finish? No! Cool! So let's create a sound. Again. Was killed. Let's play the sound. Let's play it again. It does restart it. That's what we want. Let's create another copy of the same sound. They are different, but they are the same. Oops. 
We didn't have enough time. Okay. And I'm stopping only one of them. Yeah, it works. Yay! Oh, and by the way, we can hear the music. No more conflicts with musics. No error message. So somehow what we were doing wrong with uh, memory not initialized and things like that was messing up with open AR and sometimes also breaking musics. I think we are good. Thank you so much for your help, Thor. It was really, really uh, helpful. Especially the, you find one very specific bug. With uh, not setting the source to AL none at some point. Yep, so let's commit that. Did I already update the change log? Maybe not. Um, go to stop a sound effect. So what did we add so far in the in this new sound API? We added play and stop. We could very 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 easily add pause and unpause. We even already have them in C side. And we know they work, they are used by the new thing that interrupts the application when it gets uh, when the window gets out of focus. Simulation is suspended and music and sounds are also suspended. So there is really no reason not to to do um, the set paused function. All right, I will I will create feature request. I don't think we already have one. Wait, why do I have, why do I have some stuff here? New issue. Maybe I already started writing something one day. Uh, okay. How to pause, unpause a sound effect. I mean, no, sound. Set paused. Okay, so that we don't forget. But this one we can construct it done now, except uh, documentation. We need to write the documentation. We have a way to loop the sound. Um, well, interesting. Uh, I was not aware of that. No, we are not in the API. Where we, we are not letting the user uh, 
specify if they want to loop the sound effect, but we we allow that for music actually to play music. But it's not in the API; it's in the metadata of the music file. We detect some loop tags, actually the same as what RPG Maker does. For some effects, yeah, it might be interesting. You had to add a loop when you try to play rupee payment sound. Ah, okay. While in Solaris, you you would just use a timer, a repeated timer. You do play sound, play sound, play sound. Uh, okay, let's commit this and let's continue with documentation. Closes. I think it's twelve eighty nine. Yeah, you're right. There is a small delay. Mm. If you want really good precision, it would be cool to support this. Oh, I need to take care of the quest editor this time. Let's not forget. Am I already in the correct branch? No. So I do need to install that. Ninja. Ninja. Maybe it will just work. Yeah, because the quest editor is able to play sounds and it does this by calling the sound class of the of the engine even though the game is not running Main window. Not remember if it's done from here sound. Maybe it's in the quest tree. Quest tree view, maybe? Play sound. Audio play sound, cool. Yeah, so this is this is now obsolete. Can we just do sound play? No.
How do I do that? Because it's quite annoying. I now have two classes. And this one just uses a const reference to to the actual data. So you have to store the data somehow in the editor side. I guess my sound cache could use sharp ptr or rather q sharp pointer sound buffer. No match. Yeah, I need to create it at some point. Point new uh, solar on buffer like this. Was wrong. Incomplete type. I need some buffer here. Is it better? No overloaded. I'm not surprised. I think we want to do it like that. Some buffer. Is there a function like Q make shared? No. Thank you for the follow, Kappa votes. Okay, so let's load the data, insert this so that we don't load it uh, tons of time. And then what do we do exactly in like here? Get the buffer, we just do some PTR start and the lifetime of this pointer actually continues automatically before because start does store it somewhere, which means that it's easy. Sound PDR sound, sound equals uh, yeah, yep, yep, yep. So sound create. Sound buffer and sound start. We can even do close quest. Should work.
I think I will probably do the documentation another time. But that's really the last remaining thing about this issue. Okay. So can we still play a sound here? Yep, still working. Nice. I just hope I'm not leaking memory because it's still a bit weird how we how we store the the objects here. But we should be fine. Okay. Mm. Use the new engine API to play sounds. I think it's stable enough to be merged to dev. Okay, I will end the stream now, I won't wait. I will not make you wait for the, the end of this compilation, <laughs> but I'm merging this to the main development branch. Next time we'll do the documentation and we will do the second issue uh, that was asked in this context um, about um, yeah translations allowed to have language specific sounds like we do for images. Yes, I did put back the preloading stuff. Yes, very good point. It, it could have been easy to forget, but okay, my computer is slow because it's compiling the dev branch again with tons of threads, but yeah, I can show you just to be, just to double check resource provider. Here is my preloader thread. So the idea is that I pre-create all my sounds, all my sound buffers for all existing sound ideas, all existing sound files, but I, I don't load any of them but I have the object created, the objects created, which means that I can traverse this structure in my thread then to just load them. And if it happens that the actual game wants one of these sounds before it's loaded, it will load it itself and there is a lock inside the load function to make sure that both threads will not uh, do it at the same time. There is a lock here. So I was already doing it for tie sets and it works well. I never have any, I never had any, any crash or any problem. But we, on some systems, we probably don't want to unconditionally load everything because some systems have li limited memory. So 
C'est amusing. Un, un STD mutex here. And load mutex is yeah std mutex as a member function of that sound buffer class. So if someone is already loading the same instance, it will be locked. And I'm using this uh, stupid pattern where I where a test is loaded twice which is just a stupid boolean. So I think it's supposed to work. I mean, I've, I've, I've learned this pattern here in my previous job, but later I, I think I read somewhere that it was not completely, completely safe. But then I don't know how to do it. I don't know how to do it better. Anyway, like I said, I never had any crash, any problem so far with with this code. Are you doing exactly the same for tile sets? Okay, compilation is done and was successful. So let's so actually I did I added this very small coding style thing. But let's push the merge. Let's do the same on the editor side. Hey Kappa votes. Uh, I learned C++, I mean I learned C in my studies and then I learned C++ um, yeah, with some tutorials on the internet, internet for starters. I mean I had a book about C++ but uh, I didn't understand <laughs> any of it the first time but then I after I learned properly um, languages like um, Java and C in in my studies I switched to C++ so I read things about learning C++ when you know C and I started basically implementing the SolarWorks engine uh, yeah, that was my first C++, my first real C++ project. I was already good at C and yeah, I, and I, I switched to C++, but my, my first commits, in my first commits on Solaris, uh, it's quite funny, you can still see the history, but I, I was doing all mistakes that um, new C++ programmers coming from C uh, could do. All the typical mistakes like not using the standard containers but uh, implementing your own structures with pointers everywhere and things like that uh, git merge audio conflict what Solaris sound git log hey how are you thanks happy new year Uh, because I reverted something, but still.
I don't understand why I have a conflict here. I'm in dev. Lua looks like Python. Yes, yes, it's true. It's a bit the same spirit. It's like a, a quick script, scripting language, dynamic, dynamically typed. So I'm in dev, and in audio API. Let's just do it. It seems to not be correct this pattern. So how should I should I do then? Yeah, exactly. I want to avoid two threads loading the same instance of sound buffer. So let me push this. Uh, let's see, I should say that I did solve the conflict. Let me still quickly test again the editor after the merge. Okay. Git push. So I do check loaded, I do lock, I do check loaded, and I do load, and I do unlock, yeah. So it's like you said, except that there is a first step where I do is loaded, check, I do, I do check loaded twice to avoid useless locks. Yep, that's what I want. I want the second to, to return here. Well, I could, I, I could maybe move this earlier. Well, the second one is locked anyway. No, it, it will not change anything. 
Yeah, so that's really the pattern that I learned uh, at work. Yeah, it will almost never uh, have to wait. So yes, so as I was saying, Solaris was my first C++ real C++ project, and then at the same time, I, um, I mean, yeah, later, a few years later, I, it was my main job to, it became my main job to, to do C++. And this, this is where I, I learned Qt, by the way. But if you want to look at the first commit, first draft, I think I, I was trying to create some stupid data structures. The very first commit in 2006. So I knew C at this point and, and I was trying to switch to C++. So I create a class with virtual things, create an enum. And there was really not much. Okay, it was not that bad the first one. Oh, yes, it was bad. <laughs> Double pointers. Ugh. I think I had just no idea about uh, std vector or std everything that that is available in the standard library that was the very first commit mutex means mutual exclusion Yeah, I usually avoid to do multi-threading code because it adds a lot, a lot of complexity, but there is a specific case where you really want it. Previously, uh, when you we did load all sounds at the beginning of the game, but in the main thread, so it was blocking the rest and for example, in Zelda Mr. Ops or SDX or probably in most of my games, I was using the fact that there's a small delay uh, maybe not in this one Yeah, here. Zelda Solarus present. And then a, sm a small delay of like one or two seconds. So here I actually load all sounds in the main thread while nothing is happening. So you don't realize that actually the, the game is freezing for, uh, for like two seconds. That was quite, quite a hack. But now we no longer do that. We we do load in a, in a separate thread. Yeah, as soon as you create multiple threads, you you start having problems of uh, multiple threads uh, fighting, doing the same thing. Um, yeah, basically calling the same function at the same time and which creates all sorts of problems. And to avoid that, we you have to, to add some locks, so typically with mutex. And if it starts getting complicated and you, uh, you add more and more locks, you, 
you end up on situations where uh, two threads are both waiting on, on a lock from the other thread and they are stuck forever. This is called a deadlock. So that's typical funny problems that you have with multi-threading code and it's particularly difficult to debug because since it's multi-thread um, you never have twice the exact same execution. It's, it's sometimes very hard to, to reproduce. Um, yeah, most of my games have probably a lot of, of small sounds, yes. And back in the days, I, I was um, really just loading them on the fly, like the first time the hero was using his sword. Um, yeah, the engine would read the sound file from, from the disk. But on some systems, it was slow. And you could feel it. You could really feel the first time any sound was, was played. So that's why I, I did this idea of preloading all sounds at first uh, during the title screen. First without threads and now in, in a separate thread. And when it's time to fill audio buffer, it just decodes the requested part. Ah, OK. Because here I, I, I load I load from disk and I decode everything. Maybe it's not a good idea because I'm I'm wasting some memory here. And probably when it's slow, I mean systems where it is slow, it, it's probably because of the disk and not because of decoding the file. Yep, yep, yep. But uh, yeah, I think that's enough for today. We made some good progress. Thank you again for for the help. And we will do more of these. Um, the next one will will be in French. So, thank you all for watching, and see you next time. Oh wait, maybe I can raid someone. Yeah, I know who I want to read. What does decoding do? So when you when you load the file from disk, it's a .ogg file, so it's encoded with uh, with Vorbis. So I, so when I say load from the disk, it's really just uh, copy the the bytes from the file in memory. And then we want to decode it, so ask the Vorbis library to convert the OGG data to um, to raw sound data that we can send to the sound card. Because the sound card doesn't know any particular format or any compression format, it just wants uh, raw data. Okay, guys, so let's read specs and stats because he's doing something very, very unique. He's doing a speedrun of, uh, I mean, multiple speedruns <laughs> precisely. He's doing 100% of all Zelda 3D games in a row. So, yes, he's crazy. And apparently, he has finished Majora, Majora's Mask and now he's doing Ocarina of Time, and later he will do. Wind Waker and uh, then the other games. So right, specs and stats. Let's go. Yeah, so please encourage him. Bye.